All right, let's do this. Let's talk about grading the Carolina Hurricanes during the pause. Now, before we get started, I just want to ask you to please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, which will alert you when my next video comes out, which will be about the Calgary Flames. Now, the last team I graded was the Chicago Blackhawks back there, and I've been shooting these videos in reverse alphabetical order, grading all 31 NHL teams. And I'll throw up a link up top here over the next few minutes of the most recent teams I've graded, but you can easily find them on my playlist later. Now, the Hurricanes! are kind of like the upper middle class team of the NHL now, aren't they? Uh, they got good coaching. Waddell, their GM, is surprisingly making some mostly astute moves. Uh, I don't know if you know some of his trading history, but it's no party, man. It's <laughs> with his former NHL teams, that is. And I want to touch on that real quickly. Um, starting with the Patrick Marlowe trade, he weaponized his cap. He got a first round pick out of that, which he later used um, to get a defenseman. That more on that in a second. Uh, then he, what else did he did? He basically stole Eric Holla from the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, he uh, dumped Scott Darling in his contract uh, with the Florida Panthers, got James Reimer, who no one thought would be any good this year, and, and has surprised everyone. He traded Justin Falk to the Blues. That was a good trade. He picked up Joel Edmondson, who was a UFA at the end of the season, by the way. A good defensive defenseman, left shot, who eats up a ton of minutes. Um, I think he's playing on that top pairing right now because of all the injuries. They also got back Dominic Bach, who's number three on their uh, prospect uh, top ten prospect pool list, and a seventh-round pick. Great deal. Um, and then some more notable ones. They had to pick up Sammy Vatnin uh, for a couple of prospects and a fourth-rounder. Okay. Uh, he's still injured, though, hasn't even played. Um, then there's the Brady Shea deal for the New York Rangers. I didn't really like, I wasn't crazy about this. I know they were forced into it, really. But giving up a first-round pick, ouch, for Brady Shea. Man. Um, and then Vincent Trocek. They kind of stole him, sort of, from the Florida Panthers, didn't they? They got a second-line center out of it and sent the Panthers a third-line center and a third and fourth line, you know, energy plugger player in Walmart. Um, and I gave them a couple of older prospects who may or may not turn out. We'll see. I mean, Hollow's a good player, but he hasn't been the same since he got injured over a season and a half ago with the Golden Knights. Um, all the luck to him. We'll see what happens. But you see what I mean? Some, some, mostly some astute moves by him. And um, when it comes to how they did this year... They hit a couple of bumps in the road, but um, they fared pretty well. I think they they did improve on a lot of things. They finished the season before the pause um, with a three win win a three, with th a th winning three in a row. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, they were five four and one in their last ten. Finished with eighty one points um, for that first wild card spot uh, in a very tough Metro division behind Washington, Philly, and Pittsburgh. Uh, there's no no hanging your head about being behind any of those teams at the moment. Um, now, when it comes to uh, the hockey news or their prospects, excuse me, I'm reversing my my phrasing here. Um, the hockey news rates their uh, the prospect pool seventh in the league right now, and uh, three of their top ten prospects are in the top uh, rated in the top hundred. So there you have it. Um, now, some some stats that I'm going to throw at your face, starting with the special teams, which is vastly improved. I was really surprised to see these numbers. The coaching on that team, that's how you know they're as good as they are. Their power play was 20th last season. It's 8th now. Yeah. Um, their penalty kill was 8th last season. It's 4th now. Unbelievable. Wins, they're ninth in the league. Points, they're 13th. Uh, goals for, they're 15th, similar to last year. Goals against, they're ninth, again, similar. Uh, Face-off win percentage, they're ninth in the league. Shots against, they're second, um, only allowing 29.3. And shots for, they're third, uh, pelting 33.3 at the visitors. Some quick notes here. Um, Ajo is 20th on the NHL point leaders list with 66 points. And the next best Carolina player is ranked 29th, and that's Teravinen with 63 um, defenseman Jacob Slavin and Dougie Hamilton are uh, third and fourth on the NHL plus minus list. Actually, you can just say they're tied for third because they both have um, a plus 30. Wow. 
Uh, now, Sebastian Ajo is tied for first, um, and Warren Fogali is tied for second when it comes to the NHL shorthanded goal leader list. Um, ranking, uh, yeah, ranking with um, four and three shorthanded goals, respectively. Couldn't read my writing there for a second. Scribbles, chicken scratch. Now, um, injuries, very quickly. Um, Cat Friendly says Vatnin is still on the IR at the moment, the left shot defenseman from the Devils, um, still. And then, um, of course, right shot defenseman Hamilton and Pesci, huge pieces of their team are both still on the LTIR. I don't know if they return for the 24 playoff, player, uh, playoff format. Let's hope they do at least one of them. I think Hamilton was a, a maybe a, a fractured fibula or something, and Pesci was a shoulder. Don't quote me on that. And then there's Zingle, who's day-to-day, -day, so he should be back. He plays all forward positions. Um, now let's talk about some players and their stats, starting with the goalies, uh, beginning with uh, Peter Marzik. Now, in 40 games this season, he had a 905 save percentage. No wonder there's been rumors about them looking uh, to sign Leonard as a UFA after this uh, season finishes. Uh, last season, in 40 games, he had a 914 save percentage, though. That was decent. Kind of rejuvenated his career after coming from Philly and Detroit. Uh, in the playoffs, though, he only had an 8 9 4 save percentage in 11 games. I thought he did better than that, but apparently not. Uh, maybe that was all McElhaney <laughs> and their defense. McElhaney, of course, is now with Tampa Bay. Now, their new backup, James Reimer, 6'2", uh, 220 pounds. He's 32. He will be uh, just had a birthday in March. And he's signed for one more season at $3.4 million. I think uh, Marzik um, is signed for one more season as well at just about the same amount of money. Now, Reimer, in 25 games for them, had a 914 save percentage. Wow. I, I think a lot of people thought he might have been done. Um, in last season with Florida, in 36 games, he had a 900 save percentage. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm happy to see that guy... Uh, turn his career around. Hopefully he keeps it up. And then um, I believe it was Marzik who got injured and they had to bring up an AHL goal, goaltender in Alex. I'm going to butcher this name. I'm so sorry. Nedeljovic. Nedeljovic. Okay. Uh, he's 24. He'll be 25 in January. Six foot, 190 pounds. He only played four games. Uh, had an 887 save percentage. So between the goalies and the you know the injuries to their D, um, maybe their you know their their uh, their year could have been a lot better. Um, now speaking of the D, let's talk about their top line uh, point getters, starting with Dougie Hamilton, of course. Who though even though he's been injured, the right shot defenseman, he's 26 years old, played 47 games, had 14 goals, 40 points um, to lead all D, was a plus 30, which is tied for first on the team with uh, Jacob Slavin and averaged 23-17 a game. Jacob Slavin is in second place with the D. He's 25, played 68 games, had six goals, 36 points, also plus 30, averaged 23-24 a game, most on the team. Um, Jake Gardner is third here. I'm smirking because uh, they just signed him to, Was it? Uh, he has three more years left on his con contract for just over $4 million, give or take. Man... Um, he's a good guy, and I wish him well, but uh, anyways, he played 68 games, 4 goals, 24 points, quite the fall off for him, um, and he was a minus 24, ouch, Lee fans are just going, yup, he, he's just not good in his own, he's very easy on, on, uh, players in his own zone, he's light on them, and he just gives away the puck at the most awful time. Um, so there's that. He averages 16.40 a game, by the way. Uh, I also wanted to briefly touch on Joel Edmondson, who they got from the uh, St. Louis Blues there. Um, he's six foot four, 215 pounds. Big boy. Uh, he's 26. He'll be 27 in June. Um, in 68 games with them, he had 20 points plus seven. He's playing uh, first-line pairing minutes now with Pesce and Hamilton down. Um, so they're, they're very lucky to have him. Hopefully he doesn't want too much money, uh, too much more than he's making now, and they we can and they can resign him. Uh, now I also wanted to touch on Brady Shea, who they got from the Rangers. Um, he's a another left shot defender, uh, six foot three, two hundred ten pounds, twenty six years old. Just had a birthday in March. He only played seven games for them. One point minus four. 
Um, in 60 games with, with the Rangers, eight goals, 23 points, minus six. His biggest season as a player, he had 39 points back in 2016-17 and was a plus 11. That was his best season. Um, I, I, yeah, I guess that's why I wasn't too crazy about them, you know, trading that first rounder for him. Um, let's talk about the forwards, though, and talking about starting with their, their uh, point getters, their leading point getters. Ajo, of course, is first. 22 years old, 68 points, had 38 goals, leads the team, as well as points, was 66, was a plus 10, averaged 19.25 a game, which led all forwards. Uh, Tara Vinen was second, his line mate, who at 25, played 68 games, had 15 goals, 63 points, not far behind him, and was a plus 20, the best amongst all the forwards. He averaged 19.12 a game. And in third place, also their line mates on that first line, Svechnikov, uh, only 19 years old, played 68 games, had 24 goals, 61 points, pretty respectable, plus nine. This kid is going to just get better and average 16.44 a game. Who can who cannot forget? Every time I think of him, I think of that fight with Ovechkin in the playoffs. That was, I mean, it was bad for him, sort of, but that um, was fun to watch in a way. It wasn't fun to see him get knocked out, but... Anyway, I'm, just, I'm falling over myself here now. Let's talk about some other forward players, starting with Vincent Trocek, who they got from the Panthers um, to be their, their second-line center. He's 26. He'll be 27 in July, 5'10", 180 pounds-ish. Uh, he also plays right wing. In seven games, he's had two points, minus five. Uh, in 55 with Florida this year, he had 10 goals, 36 points, minus three. Uh, his numbers were kind of similar last season, too. He, he was also injured, so he only played 55 games last season, 34 points. Um, but in 2017-18, I think, was it his career year? Yeah, career year for him. 31 goals, 75 points, minus 9 still. But um, we'll see. With a better defense behind him, we'll see how this works out. Um, and this, the whole second line here is him, Niedermeyer, and Nekas. Um, just recently, that is... Uh, uh, which I got from left wing lock. Nieder Meyer, um, who they got in that trade with the uh, Minnesota Wild last season, he's 27 years old, 6'2, 218 pounds. He'll be 28 in September. He played 67 games this year, had 11 goals, 29 points, was a minus three. Huh. In 36 games after he was traded to the Carolina Hurricanes, he had 14 goals, 30 points, plus seven. He had more. He had one more point in 30 less games with them last season than he did this season. Yeah, and he signed for two more seasons at 5.25 million dollars. Hopefully, he can turn it around again. Um, now, their other line mate, uh, Martin Nekas, at the moment, anyways, or just before the pause, um, he's he's a kid, 21 years old, be 22 in January, six foot two, 190 pounds. Um, plays center and right wing. Right wing is the position he's been on. And 64 games, 16 goals, 36 points, minus six. That's better than Niederreier. <laughs> and at a fraction of the price, he's making just over $860,000 and much younger. Uh, I wanted to touch on Ryan Zingle as well. They signed as a UFA um, in 64 games, eight goals, 29 points, plus three. Ho-hum. Seems like he kind of peaked with Ottawa. Um, last year and the year before, scoring plus 20 goals and plus 40 points around there. So, um, but he's, you know, ambidextrous. He plays all forward positions. We'll see how he does um, in the playoffs. And then there's Morgan Geeky, who I had to touch on. He's the fourth line center there. Um, he's 21, be 22 in July, 6'2", 168 pounds, soaking wet. Wow. Um, now, he played two games for them. But hey, three goals, four points, plus three. Wow. In 55 games in the AHL, he had 22 goals, 42 points, minus 17. The minus 17 part is weird because almost his entire career here on Cap Friendly, he has not been a minus player at all. So I don't know. That's kind of maybe that's just a blip. Uh, in any case, I got to grade this team a solid B. Um, they're doing probably a little bit better than I thought they would be to be doing when I did my season preview. And it just proves that they weren't, what happened last season wasn't an aberration, that they're here to stay. They're well coached. Their GM seems currently have a good head on his shoulders. And um, they got a good prospect pool. What's not like to not to like, right? 
and they could take another run in the playoffs. I'm excited, excited to watch them play, that's for sure. As always, I'd love to hear how you would grade this team down in the comment section down below. I would, uh, that's it, and that's all, yeah. Thank you so much for your support. Please, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and hey, in this crazy world we're living in right now, please stay safe, and if you can, stay at home. Thanks again, see you soon.